like a half an hour and realized they realized the mic was off. <coughs> uh, <coughs> but um, God bless the women. It's just so good to see such strong women in Jesus Christ. And the reason those philosophers said that the women, uh, what women these Christians have is because the women were liberated from a culture of domination and they came into powerful presence. And so we just want to affirm that, all the different ones and uh, the Inuit. Louisa. Louisa's from uh, Anuktatuk. Is that where you're, where are you from? No, no, this one. The one I met last night. Rebecca. Where do you live, Rebecca? Pond Inlet. Yeah. And so Stacy went there years ago and uh the the name of your people is uh, the language is called the nuktatuk right and so maybe she'll tell the story but that's where she was <clears throat> after years of pushing in for healing she was up at way up way up somewhere i <clears throat> i don't know where it was and uh this lady was there and translating for us and she came to our house in Kelowna, canada and uh they laid hands on stacy and that's when the healing anointing was released in her life for the first time was right there and so th there's a powerful thing on these on the first nations first peoples of this land well i want to greet you in the name of the lord <clears throat> my name is wesley stacy's en route from rome tonight right now she'll be here in a few hours she lands <coughs> and she's coming hot off the press of a three-week tour in israel switzerland <clears throat> and rome and so she'll, uh, she'll have lots to share. And uh, I am Canadian. <clears throat> uh, I, I like being up in Canada. It's just, you know, I mean, just like, wow, those Canadians, fierce warriors. <clears throat> but, uh, but God has actually relocated us to Santa Maria, California. And so we have joined the Santa Maria Healing Teams. And we're part of their, you know, <clears throat> apostolic center uh, pushing the whole healing and prayer movement worldwide to see the promised billion soul harvest. What Lori shared this morning was brilliant. I have to get all those quotes. <clears throat> and, um, you know, this I, uh, Luke 4.18, 4, Luke 4.18, the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, is, is really the watchword that's now, it's a now word. I, I just was preparing today and I was thinking, how many people have desired, uh, earnestly desired to live in the generation that you're now alive? This, this, this is the most blessed, specific, promised generation the world has ever seen. The world has ever seen. And I'll probably be able to unpack that. Just a couple things before I take off here. <clears throat> uh, we have a couple books. How many of you read uh, Praying the Bible or had Praying the Bible, The Pathway to Spirituality? Okay, a few of you. Wow, that's amazing. <clears throat> uh, so this, uh, way over here, um, this is 88 prayers of the Bible from a number of different translations, uh, uh, even the Passion Translation uh, by Brian and Candace Simmons. <coughs> and so uh, <clears throat> this lays them out prayers from the Bible that you can just have in the prayer room, walk, pray with little uh, introductions. And this uh, blue one, Praying the Bible, the Pathway to Spirituality, is <clears throat> 200 pages or so on the process of how to pray Scripture. The process of how to pray Scripture, all the way from Joshua 1.8, the earliest, you know, meditating on the Word, all the way through Catholic history, Protestant history, to present day. Uh, Dan Juster of the Tacoon Ministries, he's a Messianic Jew, said it's the best book he's read on Jewish prayer and how, how to pray from a Jewish perspective. And I take that as a tremendous compliment. And so uh, I, uh, I want you to get, the, I've only got about 12 of these books, but uh, get those and uh, you'll be blessed. <clears throat> you can have those for your ministry, by the way, for your library there. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Global Harvest. Now, uh, what I'm going to share with you is has become my most uh, beloved message. I think I've spent about a thousand hours on what I'm going to share with you in the next 45 minutes. So it will maybe be a bit like drinking from a gar uh, from a fire hose. 
And maybe just take out your a note, pay, take out a pen, <clears throat> or your, you know, your uh, whatever you take notes on, and write out my email. <clears throat> I'm going to give you my email, and I will send you all this notes and PowerPoint to you because you will want it, but you won't be able to follow it. Because usually I have a great big screen, <clears throat> and so it's even difficult reading it to follow it. So just write that down. It's uh, Wesley, Wesley, that's my name, at Be A Hero, that's our ministry, Be A Hero, dot org. Wesley at Be A Hero, dot org. We'll send you these notes free, and uh, you're going to love that. <clears throat> okay. So uh, <coughs> we believe that we're on the verge and the cusp of the billion soul harvest. We talked about that this morning. We talked about that a bit yesterday with some of the leaders that right now is the time that God is moving on the earth in unprecedented manner. This is happening all over the place, whether you're in Southeast Asia, India, we work in all those places, Africa, Latin American countries, South America. Everywhere you turn, God is on the move. And I remember listening to Mike Bickle, <clears throat> probably, uh, first time I heard him was Easter of uh, April 1989 and when I heard Mike Bickle I, I mean it was just amazing and he began to share the prophetic history and promises of the coming billion soul harvest I had never conceived that there could be such a thing as a billion soul harvest I thought things were just going to get I was from a, a very strict tradition called the Plymouth Brethren and that's tighter than Mennonites okay <clears throat> and um my theology was everything was just going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. And it was like one great big toilet bowl. You know, and just as, you know, just as the devil's flushing the toilet, you go, yeah, Jesus. And you're about to go down the chute. Michael blows, or, or Gabriel, the trumpet. And God sucks us out of there. <clears throat> and you just go somewhere and sing. And that was my end time theology. <clears throat> So when I heard this concept of a billion soul harvest, it amazed me. Now, how many of you have actually listened to Mike's eight-part series that's on his, it's free, it's on his website, Prophetic History of IHOP? How many, wave at me if you've heard it. Okay, only three or four of you. That is must hearing and listening. You've got to go there. Prophetic History of, 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 of Kansas City IHOP. Why? Because it relates to your destiny. Your destiny is tied to those prophetic promises. <clears throat> and one of the primary voices of that was Bob Jones. And Bob Jones died and went to heaven in 1975, August. And he was, <clears throat> he hemorrhaged. He had blood was coming out of his, his nose, his mouth, every, and he hemorrhaged. And he, and he, he said he, his spirit left his body. He watched his body on the bed. And he goes, how did the devil do this? I was serving God. And he, <clears throat> he went up. He actually went into the presence of the Lord. Uh, it's a long story. We have it on. Um, it's a 15-minute version. We have it on our Open Heaven CD, which uh, I might have some of those here tomorrow. But anyway, <clears throat> um, as he was coming to Jesus, Jesus put out his hand and said, Bob, it's not your time. And Bob said, he says, you have to go back. Bob says, I don't want to go back. They's persecuting me down there. <clears throat> and Jesus said, Bobby, you have to go back. And then he pointed to a crowd of people, lines of people that were going into outer darkness. And uh, <clears throat> they had one chance to look at Jesus' eyes. One chance. And their eyes would connect. And they would know it's true. Just pray for somebody right now. I'm praying for my son right now to get saved as I said that. <laughs> He's not saved. <clears throat> and he doesn't believe. So God, Caleb, right now, just save him in Jesus' name. So they had one chance to look at his eyes. And then they would go into outer darkness. And he, Jesus said, Bob, would you go back for them? Bob said, I'd go back for one soul. And Jesus said this, I'm not sending you back for one soul. I'm sending you back to prepare my leaders for a harvest of a billion souls. A billion souls. And with that, Jesus touched his body. Healing came into him. And he came back through, you know, this atmosphere. 
And there he was hovering in his room, and over his body were two resurrection angels, and they were, they were working on him, and they were prophesying. And one just went, shoo, like this, and pointed, and pointed to the center of Kansas City. And he says, now it begins, and a great explosion of light like a mushroom cloud. Praise the Lord. I've got so many prophecies going through my head right now. <clears throat> the mushroom cloud of, of Lou Engel. Boom, the dream. <clears throat> and uh, you got to hear all this stuff. I, my head's so full of, of this stuff. Then it's like I got books in my head. Then they, they just all go all the time. <coughs> they said, now it begins. And it was an explosion of the prayer movement. And that was 1975. And through many convincing proofs and infallible prophecies, comets, droughts, prophesied, earthquakes, everything, <coughs> we've come 40-some years to the, today. And, uh, and uh, I was in... Uh, Texas, Lindale, Texas, <clears throat> on the day Bob Jones passed and went into his graduation. It was February 14th. Why do I? I always remember that because Bob always says, I'm his Valentine. I'm his Valentine. And it was 2014. <clears throat> and um, as he actually was going into glory, <clears throat> his spirit left his body. And he came into one of his disciples' dreams. A man who was, who was a disciple, spiritual son, Bob, came into his dream. And uh, he was carrying a mailbag. And the mailbag had candy bars. And he was walking up and down the sidelines of a great football field. And there were players, coaches, you know, <clears throat> owners. It was, like, it was like the biggest event. And Bob was handing out candy bars full of love and truth and transformation. And they were eating these <clears throat> candy bars and being empowered. And they would go out onto the field and they began to play. And they, it was like football, but it was like the game of life. <coughs> and signs and wonders were breaking out. Healings were breaking out. And Bob said two things. Your play card, your strategy, your game strategy will be Psalms 63. Then he said, I need to be going up a level. You need to go up a level too. And he turned around and walked off into the sunset as the field changed into the cities of the earth. That's, that's like the hour he was actually leaving earth in real life. He was in the dream. In real life, he was going to heaven. <clears throat> psalm 63 is a powerful psalm. <laughs> And uh, you all should know it. It's the Jesus wept of the Old Testament. Smallest chapter. How many of you know it's the smallest chapter? <clears throat> I used to vow that I would read the Bible every single day, a chapter of the Bible every single day before I'd go to sleep. Sometimes I was working 16, 17, 18 hours a day. I'd fall in my bed so tired. I'd go, oh, I didn't read my chapter. Psalm 63 was my go-to chapter. <clears throat> Uh, and you can open your uh, iPhone to this or something. <clears throat> it says, may, may God be gracious to us and bless us. Make his face shine on us. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine on us. Have you ever heard those words before in any other passage? Say yes. Yes, of course you have. Where have you heard it? Huh? I'm not a television. I can see you. I can hear you too. Where's that verse from? Where is it? Where's it from? Good. Number six, the blessing, the ironic blessing, the most used verse or, or prayer or pronouncement. Pronouncement. Where'd my gavel go? pronouncement in all the bible <clears throat> the lord bless you the lord keep you the lord cause his face to shine on you the lord be gracious to you the lord turn his eyes toward you and grant you shalom peace the power to destroy all the chaos that surrounds you <clears throat> that is the summary statement of that decree that god said now he says the lord be gracious and bless us Verse 2 is very powerful. It says, so that, 
That's a purpose clause. So that your ways may be known on the earth, your salvation among all the nations. <clears throat> the Israelites were called to be blessed so that the ways of God are known on the earth. How are the ways of God known on the earth when a nation is blessed? Because if that nation says God is their father, and this is what happens in his family, everybody else says, oh, that's what God's like. And they want to join up. They, the nations want in. <clears throat> Salvation among the nations. Bob would say this, and you, you can turn me down just a tiny bit more because I want to yell louder. <clears throat> Bob would say this. He would say, <clears throat> the end time strategy is the believer walking in the pronounced blessing of God. <clears throat> you understanding your blessing is the key to global end time harvest. Why? Because as people see how you are living and how you're blessed, how your body is blessed, how your finances are blessed, how your family is blessed, then they say, I want that God. And healing is at the tip of the spear. Healing is at the tip of the spear. If you don't have healing, if you don't have health, if you don't have long life, it doesn't matter how much finance, it doesn't matter what's going on in your life, healing is at the tip of the spear. Then he says, may the peoples praise you, God. No, way too small. May all the peoples praise you. This was a call for global harvest by the Jews. It, it's shocking to me that it took the disciples and the Jews so long to figure out they were actually supposed to lead, they were actually supposed to lead the whole wide world to Jesus. It took him years. He says the nations are singing for joy, etc. Now watch this. <clears throat> May the peoples praise you, verse 5. May all the peoples praise you. Watch it. The land yields its harvest. The more you praise God, the larger your cucumbers grow. There is a direct correlation between a people... That praise God in the house of prayer. I mean, morning sacrifice, evening sacrifice. There's praises going up. <coughs> There's a direct correlation to your land responding to the blessing of God. Did you hear that? We're, we're not just talking, you know, feelings. We're not talking about, you know, I had some joy. No, we're talking about tangibly the land responds to blessing. The land responds to praise. He says, that God our God blesses us. God our God blesses us. When a people are walking in God, the entire land, he says, I'm going to bless your, your land, your crops, that which grows out of the land, your livestock, that which feeds off the land and feeds you, and your bodies. The entire circle is about tangible blessings. May God bless us still. Why? So that, verse 7, the ends of the earth will fear him. So I am passionate to get people understanding that God wants to bless them and have them walk in blessing. <clears throat> and then what that blessing means. That's why I've spent 1,000 hours on this. Now, you know, I mean, I do this for a living, so I get the privilege. Some of you are retired. You can put in 1,000 hours. It's not hard. Just do it every day for like years. <clears throat> so blessing. I made it my purpose <clears throat> to study every blessing passage in the entire Bible, and I'm doing it right now. Uh, I've got one book from Cambridge University in England <clears throat> on blessing, Barach. And uh, the guy said there's 400 blessing verses in the Bible. I checked out another source. It said 450. I gave the task to my OCD pilot friend, Neil Livingstone, who reads 4,000-page manuals to fly the jumbo jets of Air Canada. 
for 40 years, <clears throat> 35 years, he said there's 550 verses, and I can prove it. <clears throat> so let's just say there's 500. Let's just say there's 450. Your job, Jim, should you decide to accept it, is to study all 450 verses of blessing in the entire Bible and note what blessing is. I began to do that. I went to the very first blessing in the Bible. <clears throat> you know what it is, don't you? Say yes. Sure you do. Go ahead, shout it out. Where's blessing first described in the Bible? First verse. That's me waiting. <laughs> Come on, somebody take a guess. Yeah, yeah, of course, Genesis, but no, way before that. Come on, guys. <clears throat> Genesis 3, good, but <clears throat> first chapter, right? How many of you thought, but you were too scared to say it, Adam and Eve? Guys, do you guys read your Bibles? <clears throat> I'll get to that in a second. So I, of course, went to Genesis. You know, I looked it up. I, okay. Okay. You know, because he created man, he blessed them. So I went to the Bible, and I looked it up. The very first verse I saw shocked me, because it wasn't Adam and Eve. I went, what? It's on day five. Genesis 121, and God created birds and fish. And he blessed them. And said, multiply, I went, birds and fish. God bless birds and fish. He must be Australian. <laughs> birds and fish. I was in Australia preaching, and I was quoting, praying the Bible. <coughs> and I goes, <coughs> I was talking about obscure verses that I pray, and he goes, one's from uh, David going, oh, I eat ashes from my food, and my drink is mingled with tears. I stand alone like a bird on a roof. I said, a bird on a roof? What's a bird on a roof? Some old Aussie goes, a target. <laughs> a bird on a roof. <clears throat> so, birds and fish. So I prayed. I said, God, why did you bless birds and fish? I prayed a long time. And then it occurred to me, that's the first day he created life. When he created life, he blessed life. He blessed life. Now, stay with that thought. So the second verse was 127. So God created mankind, and in his own image, he created them, male and female, Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve, Adam and Eve. <clears throat> he created them, and he, God blessed them. He blessed them and said... Fill the earth, subdue the earth, rule or have dominion over the earth. As caretakers made in my image. Now, here's the point. The word bless, this is out of a theological dictionary. Theological dictionary. In other words, you can't change words. Words mean what they mean. The word bless means to endue with power for success. Prosperity. Fecundity. Longevity. How many of you know what fecundity is? Of course you don't. I didn't know it either. <clears throat> I had to go to the dictionary to understand the dictionary. <clears throat> fecundity is fruitfulness. Now watch this. God created mankind, and the first words that mankind heard was a pronouncement of blessing with the power in the pronouncement to be successful in all they do. That's what the word means. The empower, <clears throat> to empower for success. To empower for success. Now here's the beautiful thing. If you are alive today, if you have breath, you're ordained for success. Blessing. Come on. That's good. Clap for that one. <clears throat> 
if you have breath and you're living, <clears throat> this is not Old Testament, New Testament. The first decree of God and the, per- and the thinking of God is he's going to empower you to be a success. This is huge. This is so wrapped in um, <clears throat> Genesis. Blessing is mentioned 80 times in Genesis, 80 times. Why? It's the beginning. It's the foundation, 80 times. Do you know how many times love is mentioned in Genesis? I think it's a 13, and only five of them, you know, <clears throat> have to do with love, love. Why? Because God was establishing the relationship. He cre- he's the creator, and as the creator, he blesses us to, as it were, <clears throat> manage, caretake, take care of the earth and, 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 and the people. <clears throat> so this was huge to me. And still I'm on introduction. I did a few more summary verses. It was all about blessing. And then, as you know, because you saw the movie Noah, things just didn't go well. People didn't want to be blessed. They didn't want to follow God. Their hearts are evil continually. That's the Lord telling me my time's up. Uh, that was a little ding I heard. <clears throat> it's probably on the phone. And so God, God comes up with a plan. We're going somewhere with this. And he calls a hook-nosed Iraqi out of Babylon, or the Chaldees, and calls him <clears throat> to go out of his father's land, and I will show you, you know, what I'm going to do with you. And that's Genesis 12, 12, 1 to 3. You know this. And so it says this. The Lord called Abram and said, leave your country. I'm going to make you a great nation. Watch this now. Here it is. I will bless you. By the way, this decree that's written in the Bible is the greatest decree that any human has ever had from any supposed deity in the whole wide world. I'll say that again. Whether a Caesar, a Pharaoh, a king, a potentate, There is no extant record of any human that has ever supposedly had such a over-the-top statement by their God. There's none. So this is over-the-top. He says, I'm going to make you into a great nation. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make your name great. You will be a blessing. Everywhere you go, everyone boats going to float. I'm going to bless those that bless you. Whoever curses you, I will curse. And all the peoples of the whole earth are going to be blessed through you. Do you know how outrageous that is? All the peoples of the whole earth are going to be blessed by you. Think about that. You pick up your, you pick up your iPhone. You push the button. And you see the time. And the date is 2018. Why is it 2018? Because that's based on Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ came out of the loins through the children of Israel, through Abram. You got out of bed this morning because of this blessing on Abram thousands of years ago. Do you know that? Come on. You got out of bed today. We are gathered Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today. We are gathered because of this promise thousands of years ago. And the whole earth, the Inuit, I mean, all over the earth, you think about it. And so this blessing. Now, the blessing is over the top, and I'm going to try and cut to the chase here. I was pretty good in the blessing until I started getting to, you know, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. When I got to Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, especially Deuteronomy 28, it threw me into unbelief. Why? Because the blessing is so all-encompassing. It's so huge. You you know Deuteronomy 28. I'm going to bless you coming. I'm going to bless you going. I'm going to bless your your baskets. I'm going to bless your food. I'm going to bless your gland. I'm going to bless your bodies. I'm going to bless this. I'm going to bless that. Whoever comes at you one way is the enemy. is going to flee seven ways. There'll be none of these diseases. There's going to be no one infertile among you. There's going to be no miscarriages. 
I'm going to bless your cows. Your cows are going to have more cows than the pagans around you. Your chickens will lay more eggs. Bigger eggs. And then, of course, there's the curses. Now, when I read that, and I looked at blessing, and I looked around, I didn't see that. I didn't see that in the church. I saw sick people everywhere. Crazy people everywhere. <clears throat> That's a joke. <clears throat> and and I, I, started to, I started to take stock, <clears throat> and I said, this is what the Bible says, but it's not happening. So I finally had to d make a deduction. This can't be true. Maybe that's just a promise to the Jews. And that's why they're always rich. <laughs> so I stopped believing it for a little while. Stopped preaching it. Then I was in Geneva at the place where the Red Cross was founded in the Revival Center in Geneva all those years ago <clears throat> from a product of the Revival. And I was still working my way through the verses, and I got to Galatians. When I got to Galatians, I couldn't believe I missed this for 30-some years. Saved. 30, no, saved almost 40 years. I could not believe that I missed this. Do you know you can read the same Bible over and over and over and get something new every single day? Galatians 3, you want to write it down, Galatians 3. Understand then that those who believe are the children of Abraham. We're going to go 18 more minutes and maybe 20. <clears throat> Understand those who believe are children of Abraham. Now listen, if you believe today in Jesus Christ, you have become a child of Abraham. You're grafted in. You're part of the family. Paul's talking to blood drinking, tattooed, pierced, cuttings, fornicating barbarians who have gotten saved and they've come to church and they're sitting next to a whole bunch of uptight Jews who won't even eat anything. They're always washing. They're always washing. And now they have to go to these love feasts with a bunch of these pagans, barbarians who've gotten saved. They're called Gentiles. And Paul's telling them, he says, you're, you're, you're in the family. Wherever you came from, you're in the family. Now the scripture foresaw this in advance. Uh, that God would justify the Gentiles, and he announced the gospel, the good news, in advance to Abraham. All nations will be blessed. There's a lot that can be said there. I'm not going to say it. <clears throat> so those who have faith are blessed along with the man of faith. Watch it. He redeemed us. He redeemed us. Purpose clause. In order that... The blessing given to Abram might come on the Gentiles. You can't separate the blessing of Abraham from you. Because you're in the lineage now. You've been put in. You've been grafted in. This is your family. What Abram got, what Isaac got, what Jacob got, what the 12 sons of Jacob, who became the 12 tribes of Israel because God changed Jacob's name to Israel those promises are yours that means Deuteronomy 28 it's yours all those outrageous promises of blessing and health and wealth and and protection and long life they're yours because the blessing given to Abram is coming to the Gentiles you say, well, the blessing's Christ. No, it's not. How do I know? Because he says right there, the blessing comes through Christ. Through Christ. And by that faith, we receive his spirit. Why does it come through Christ? Now, here it is. Why didn't the Jews get the blessing? 
<clears throat> what happened in history? Because there was all this if then. If you do this, I will do that. If then. <clears throat> there never was a remnant large enough to tip the scales because as a nation, they just kept going astray. And the then was, then I, the curses will come upon you. Now, the reason blessing stops in Israel was because of their disobedience. Here's the beautiful thing. Jesus comes in and takes the curse. He takes the curse. And he invites you into the family. And so the if then is this. If I don't, something happens, it goes on Jesus. I have an advocate with the Father. I'm left with, through Jesus, God is free to bless me. He doesn't have to curse me because Jesus took it. That means I have to dial in to the blessings that God promises to Abraham on earth. That's huge. That's your job. And it, it starts by having an entire mind, mind change. We're not called to survive. We're called to overcome. We're called to be victors. You know where the word Nike comes from? Overcame by the blood of the lamb. Victory. It, 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 it's, it's overcomer. That's where Nike comes from. It's a Greek word, Nike. Nike. That's what it means, overcomer. We are overcomers. So if you belong to Christ, you're Abram's seed and heirs. The inheritance of Abram is yours. Now here it is. That day in Geneva, I went crazy. I mean, it was Christmas all over again. I went, whoa! <clears throat> I said, I, I, went to, I went to the book of Genesis and became a madman reading Genesis. I didn't even used to like Genesis. I don't like fighting stories. David's mighty man, Shamgar, in a pit with a line. <laughs> now I went, Genesis, why? Because it's like my bank account. I have to go to Genesis and look at the manifestation of blessing in the life of Abram, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, the 12 sons, if I can see what blessing looks like in their life, I have authority to call that into my life. Because I'm promised the blessing of Abraham. Now, moving to wrap this up. <clears throat> the first contention he had was what? Abraham, I will bless you. And to your offspring, I will give this land. Now, that's problematic when the guy's 75, and he gets the promise, and his wife is like 60 or so, or 65, I can't remember. That's, that's the start of the promise. Like, something's not working here. So he goes, and they go on for like, a whole bunch more years, appearances of God, and every time he's kind of a little bit down, God just appears to him and says, you're going to have a, you know, it's going to be great. <clears throat> so they come up with a great idea. I will have a child through my wife's nurse or servant. And actually, that was okay in the ancient world, in, in the Middle East. That's what they did. And so they thought, that's not a problem. We just interpret it differently. <clears throat> and that's what they did. But when the child, when about 15 years later, 13 years later, God appears again, he goes, no, 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 you didn't get it. You're going to have a child from your own body through Sarah's own body. She laughs. Did you preach on that? She laughs. He laughs. <clears throat> Guess what? There's breakthrough. There's breakthrough. And the first, not the first blessing, but the powerful, the most powerful expression of blessing that they receive is a miraculous birth to an impotent woman. And if that's not enough, Isaac and Rebecca, she's impotent. She can't conceive. 
Jacob and Rachel, Rachel can't conceive. All three of the, of the matriarchs are all barren. Blessing begins right there with healing of the body. Come on. The whole thing was breakthrough with healing of the body. And if the, if the body's not healed, it doesn't matter what you have. You can have a lot of cows, a lot of camels, a lot of chickens. But if your body's not healed, you're not focusing on the camels, cows, and chickens. And they broke through. And then it just passed right on. And so this whole thing of healing, healing is the, found, healing is the foundational Blessing is the foundational manifestation of your relationship with God. And the manifestation of blessing is healing. So you don't have to go to the cross to begin healing. You have to just look. And, and, and <clears throat> you know, when the Israelites crossed the Red Sea, they got in there, <clears throat> got across the Red Sea. Within three days, they're out of water. They cry out to God. They cry out to Moses. And God says, I'm going to heal the water. That's Exodus 15. He heals the water. And he says this, from now on, if you have any need in your life, I will be to you. Watch it. Jehovah Rapha. Rapha. Jehovah Rapha. That's the Lord God, the healer. That's his name. The Lord God, the healer. That's his name. And so we go fast forward. The prophets foretell a future coming. When there's coming a Messiah, an anointed one, who will be the perfect son, the perfect king. And Jesus Christ himself comes into Nazareth. As we said, Luke 4.18, and he announced, I'm that one, and here's what I'm going to do. Why? He broke through because he never sinned, and the curse then came on him. And he was the manifestation of healing was the evidence of the new age, the age to come that the, all the prophets said would come. And just as it broke through in Acts, <clears throat> and we saw a plethora, we saw the greatest amount of healings that the Bible had ever seen, there's coming a move at the end of the age which will eclipse, which will eclipse what happened in Acts. Come on, it's coming. And Jesus himself said it. Greater things will you do because I go to the Father. We believe that we're in this, you know, we've just crossed 70 years. Uh, Israel became a nation and 70 years ago. They just celebrated 70 years. That was one week or two weeks ago when we had our 10 days in Santa Maria. We're calling out in this year for the 70-year release since the great healing revivalist burst on the scene. William Branham, you know, Oral Roberts, A.A. A. Allen, T.L. Osborne, all these greats, they were raised up in a three-year window, <clears throat> 1946, 47, 48, <clears throat> right there, that three-and-a-half-year window, they were all raised up. Canada, Canada had the North Battleford Revival, the Latter Rain Revival. That was 70 years ago. And right now, the prophets are saying, worldwide, get ready, there's coming a, 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 an outpouring that will eclipse all outpourings. And so your job is to understand theologically your premise that I am called to be a healer. I am called to walk in blessing. It's the strategy for the end time harvest. It manifests who God is. And when you do this, you're going to move in. Those early revivalists, <clears throat> they read it, they fasted, they prayed. It was a season of God, and they just exploded, and the earth exploded with great revivals 70 years ago. We're at 70. 70 is a, a thing of coming out of captivity. So I want to I pr uh, propose to you <clears throat> that uh, you study the blessing, <clears throat> you get into the blessing verses, and you start contending for the manifestations of bless blessing in your own life, in the life of others, and there's an authority there to say, it doesn't matter what comes against you. Everything's going to come against you. Hell will come against you. Hell will come against you. But it doesn't matter what comes against you. <clears throat> Jacob said this when he was flying, he fleeing from Laban. He says, he says <clears throat> he's going away, and Laban comes to catch him. And he goes, he says, ten times you cheated me and changed my wages. Ten times. He said, 
Had it not been for the blessing of Abraham, and, uh, the God of Abraham, and the fear of Jacob, he says, I would have left with nothing. But what did he leave with? He left with everything. It doesn't matter. You can be thrown into the pit like Joseph, but the story's not over. As a teenager, he's in the pit. As a 30-year-old, he's in the palace next to Pharaoh himself. And I'm telling you, regardless of what goes on in your life at a, at a given season, no matter what the, the thing happens to you in the season, you keep holding on to the blessing, and you push through. You push through, and, and you're going to come out on top. God says this. Again, I'm going to close with this. Let's just stand up. <clears throat> Do you all have, does, uh, how many people have access to a Bible here right now? Or, or, a, or a scripture, like a, a device. Okay. Okay, here's what I want you to do. I want you to get into a group of three. <clears throat> three, group of three or four. And I'm going to want you to pronounce this favor on, on each other, the blessing. Number six, verse 22 or three to verse 27. Okay. And uh, I want you to get kind of like so you can look at each other's eyes. You know, not in a line, but in a circle. Okay, and I want you to pronounce this blessing. Let's have, uh, this, is that gentleman with the guitar, is he still here? David? Uh, <clears throat> Maybe just come and play something, play over them. <clears throat> okay, here's what you're going to do. Numbers, yes. Numbers 6, verse about 22 or 23. You're going to go all the way to verse 27, I believe it is. Yes. Uh, where God then, that's when God slams the hammer down and says, I will bless them. Okay? So um, you start at verse 23 to 27. And I want you to look at somebody. I want you to see their name tag. Okay? And I want you to use their name in all three of the verses. Their name. Okay? So two or three of you. Well, put your hands on the shoulders of one, and you're going to pronounce this over them. And then you're going to do the other person. <clears throat> okay? So I want you now to take up your role as a priest. Okay? You're a priest. You're a kingdom of priests. And you are now going to pronounce the blessing over the person with you. Okay? It's verse Numbers 6, verse 23. And you're going to say their name in verse 24, 25, and 26. Okay? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Praise the Lord. Wow. Come on. Here it is. Blessing's coming on you now. The blessing is coming on you now. Say their name. Say their name in all three verses. Joanne, the Lord bless you. Come on, that's it. And then you, when you finish one, you switch it around. You do the next one. Oh, you're doing good. You're doing good. Make sure each one gets a blessing. Look right into their eyes. <clears throat> you're a priest. You have authority to do this. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. You have authority to do this. You are a priest.
Scripture. Praise the Lord. Okay. We're going to close the afternoon session, and we will meet everyone back here again at 7 o'clock. Have a good dinner. <laughs> and check out the book tables.